Okay, so in the previous video, we were talking about the future evolution of blockchain. It's a really good precursor to this. So if you haven't seen that, definitely go back and watch that. But really here, what I wanna talk about is George Gilder and his book called Life After Google. You see, George Gilder in 1985 published a book called Life After Television. And in that, I quote, he said that the computer of the future will be as portable as your watch, as personal as your wallet, it will recognize speech and collect your news and mail. So he could not have been more on point. Now, George Gilder in 2018 has published the book Life After Google, which is a very, very interesting book indeed. He talks about it on an interview on YouTube, actually, with the Hoover Institution. And he says, look, forget cloud computing. Blockchain is the future. And he makes some very, very, very strong arguments here. He says, look, you know, these large corporations like Google and Facebook are facing some fundamentally uh, very, very big problems that blockchain and technology companies that embrace blockchain uh, actually solve and therefore people are going to naturally migrate to. So privacy and security is being one of those very big areas. One of the points he makes is if you own a Gmail account, you don't know where your data is stored. It's still stored on a server somewhere or on a number of servers somewhere and that can be accessed or hacked or broken uh, into etc. Blockchain actually inherently solves this problem. The other point that he makes is more around the data centers themselves. He's saying, look, you know, like Google's plan in Oregon, for example, uses hydroelectric power to help cool the data, but the data is still centralized in a location. Cloud computing really uses server farms. You know, people think when their data is stored in the cloud, we think of this this fugazi where this data just exists in thin air, so that's not the case at all. It's still stored on hardware and it will still be stored on hardware uh, with the internet architecture 2.0, which will be built on blockchain. So Facebook as well, you know, it's facing issues on cost too. So, you know, with Facebook, uh, fake news is a big issue. So Facebook is having to employ lots and lots and lots of people, not just AI, but people to help fix this issue. Of course, that brings in a, in a lot of cost. Google, for every time it needs to expand its data, the economy of scale doesn't really work anymore. So to go and set up a new uh, a plant for storing data costs hundreds of millions of dollars. So Google is actually reaching this, this critical point and this critical issue. And these are really uh, George Gilder's uh, arguments. And of course, he makes them much better than I do in this video. So it's, it's really worth you going and checking out that interview. But I actually do subscribe to this. You know, I don't believe that any tech company is going to exist out there forever. I'm not saying that Google and Facebook are going to disappear. I'm saying they're going to have to adapt. You see, with Facebook, for example, you are Facebook's product. You are the product. If you use Facebook or I use Facebook, we are Facebook's product. And Facebook sells you and your information to advertisers who want to target people with specific ages, interests, etc. Here's the thing, you again don't know where your data is stored and you've see, you saw the issue that happened recently with Facebook where uh, they had that data breach. And so this has become a very, very big problem. People are concerned security and privacy is a big deal and data storage as well is of course a problem too. Now, in the new internet architecture, things look very different. So if we, if we look at internet architecture 1.0, I'm gonna call it, very, very, in very basic terms, the way it works today is you have your client, which is your computer or your iPhone or your iPad or whatever it is. That client talks to a server. The server gets the information from a database and comes back and tells you what's, what's going on. So for example, if you're here on LinkedIn watching this, for example, you would be uh, watching the video, the server is retrieving the information from the video and spitting it back to you right now. Now in Internet Architecture 2.0, there isn't just this one centralized database. So over here, you know, before we saw how data is really still very much centralized. We are now decentralizing data. And how is this working? Well, you can see that there's no server uh, really in this picture. We're talking about the client interacting directly with distributed data. And when we say distributed data, we're really now talking about blockchain. And so in one of the earlier videos of blockchain, you saw uh, how blockchain is an authenticated distributed uh, ledger, essentially. And that's what's happening here. So your data essentially would be everywhere. 
it would be on everyone's machine, but only you can access it and only you can access it because you authenticate it with your own private key. And maybe that will change. Maybe it will even be your DNA or however it will be done in the future, but only you will be able to access your data. Yet we are now making use of all the empty storage and space on machines everywhere. And so this is the beautiful thing about the Internet Arch Architecture 2.0. This is one very beautiful thing. The data is distributed everywhere. It's making use of empty space. Uh, you can even rent out your space for computing power, etc., using blockchain technology. So blockchain is just the, distrib the distribution of a ledger. Uh, or, or a database you can think of it like and that's exactly what's happening here now I know for techie people watching this you know there's going to be all sorts of points and questions and challenges raised but really we need to make sure we're bringing this to everyday language that we can talk about at the dinner table with our mother or our best friend or our child and that's what I'm doing here I really want to use this illustration because I think Coindesk did a very good job of this so we're really talking about now just interacting directly with the client now here's the thing with blockchain and George Gilder makes this argument you own your data and we're really going to see data file storage data storage happening on peer-to-peer -peer systems like the IPFS which is the internet planetary file system I believe it stands for storage.io is a cryptocurrency out there for decentralized cloud storage so make no bones about it data still has to be stored on hardware it's just what hardware we're using here that changes the hardware uh, it could be circuitry it could be solid state drives it could be glass it could be dna there's all sorts of ways of storing data and technologies emerging there um, but it's where it's stored and how it's stored and here we're saying it's going to be stored via this distributed uh, database so I think for me this is a very 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 interesting point what I want to talk about in an up-and-coming video as well is security you see the way internet version 1.0 was built uh, it, it's built basically using this idea of packets of sending and receiving information in a certain way which leaves the internet very much open to attack your data to attack and of course programmers we are relying on programmers uh, with online companies to put in security measures to make sure your data is not hacked. Blockchain actually removes this problem. There are blockchain solutions out there already that have built in built into the code all the protocols necessary to make sure that the, the, the basic protection for, for data being hacked is there, not to mention it's also uh, blockchain. So all these attacks that can happen on websites, etc., uh, if built via the blockchain, uh, can actually be avoided so that the actual architecture and the structure using blockchain as a technology as the as the underlying technology and architecture for the internet solves these attacks and these security issues so this is also a very very interesting point i hope you found this useful as always ask questions send over challenges um, until the next one take care and talk soon